Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Rappaport to the Rescue with award winning animal advocate Jill Rappaport. Hi, welcome to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport, and today it's horses, 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 all about the equines today. I just celebrated what I believe was the 15th anniversary doing the Hampton Classic Horse Show Adoption Day. That's my little rescue Oscar in the background going, yes, we're so proud of you, Mommy. Okay, Oscar, we all hear you. Anyway, it was another great event unbelievable and why i am so proud to be part of the hampton classic horse show on this particular day is because i am not a competitive rider i like to say that the only jumps i go over are the ropes at a ralph lauren sample sale okay i don't show i'm not competing my horses would live in the house if they could but what's so great about this show is that every year they have this wonderful adoption day and it's this year was another incredible event. Equus Foundation hosted the event, the incredible Valerie Angeli. And this fall, they are celebrating their 20th anniversary. And it's so wonderful to see an event like this honoring and paying homage to animals in need. Because let's face it, this horse show caters to some of the most fancy, amazing animals in the world. You know, priced in the millions, let's be honest. This is a privileged sport. These riders have incredible lives. And yet this event is all about giving back, taking care of animals in need. So again, I was so proud to be part of it. Georgina Bloomberg, the incredible equestrian daughter of former mayor Michael Bloomberg, always does this event. It's because of her that this was possible this year. We had horses, ponies, minis. I almost took a mini home. It is an incredible event because you look at these horses, they are as beautiful as some of the Hampton Classic contenders, and they're in need of a home. And we also have various shelters from all around that show up and literally bring dogs, amazing animals that need a home. So I am so proud to be part of this event. And thank you to Equus. Thank you to the Hampton Classic Horse Show, Shanette Barthcone, who runs it. It's really a privilege for me. And again, I will see you next year. So on the topic of horses, 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 well, the Hampton Classic had probably one of the best Grand Prix events ever. Okay. This was such an exciting event. It was at full capacity after COVID, you know, one year it shut down completely. And last year, people were just getting their sea legs back, wanting to feel comfortable going to the show again. So this year, needless to say, it was packed. And what an event it was. First of all, the winner is our guest today. He is Carl Cook from California. How do you like that for alliteration? And what's so great about Carl and why I wanted him to be our featured guest today, not only did he win one of the greatest horse shows of all time, I believe the winnings are $410,000 for winning the Hampton Classic on Sunday. He won by, I believe, two-tenths of a second. We will confirm that with him. It is show jumping at its greatest. I've never seen jump so high, and you have to do it in record time. You're not only jumping literally so high, you have to race around the course and make sure you're the fastest one. So Carl won the show for the first time. And what I love about this guy and why he's a guest today on Rappaport to the Rescue is he is a huge animal advocate. Everything you read about Carl is all about rescuing, adopting, neutering, spaying. He has beautiful bulldogs. One's name is Blueberry. And another one, an English bulldog looks like to me, named Tank. He rescues everything. He was once married to Kaylee Cuoco, the actress who, who doesn't adore her. And together they did so much for rescue and adoption. So I am really excited not only to meet this superstar equestrian, but a real hero out of the ring because of what he does for animals in need. So coming up, We will have Carl Cook, the winner of this year's Hampton Classic Grand Prix and a true animal advocate. Stay tuned. Take a bite out of your competition. 
advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. As you heard in my intro, I'm so excited to have the winner of this year's Grand Prix at the Hampton Classic. It was an amazing event, and this guy won it by two-tenths of a second. Carl Cook is with us today. Carl, unbelievable show. I got to tell you, I was holding my hands so tight, clenching my teeth. That was a real nail biter. It was really fun to show. Like as a competitor, it was fun. And it was, I think, I hope that for the fans, it was also exciting having people go faster and faster. And, you know, I want it always to be a good show. Well, what's amazing, because Daniel Blumen from Israel won last year. And when he went around, for our listeners that don't understand what this show is all about, I explained it a little in the intro. Not only do you have to jump, the biggest fences you've ever seen in your life with this crazy snake-like course that you weave in and out of, you have to go at record speed. So when Daniel went around, clear around, unbelievable speed, we thought he's going to win it again. And then you come in and win by two tenths of a second that is unbelievable yeah well you know i've known daniel we first competed against each other in 2004 and you know we're not the oldest people so actually knowing someone for 18 years and showing together for that long you know that's more than half of my entire riding life i was gonna say you're 30 years old right yep 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 but i knew you know i knew he went fast i watched his round and i knew that it was possible for me to go faster that doesn't mean that I will actually do that, but I knew it, it was like sometimes I watch a jump off and I'm like, yep, I'm second today. There's just no way. But I knew that it was there if I was accurate enough. And let me talk about your mare. As someone who is the proud pet parent to four mares, I always say I love all horses, but one good mare I'll tell you, there's nothing like a great mare. I love my geldings. I've always yeah. loved my geldings, but my mares take care of me. I have one, Carl, that if I'm cantering along and I ride Western and I'm, yeah. I'm a very fearful rider, I don't jump anything, but you know, I can do my own thing in the ring. Yeah. But yeah. if ever I feel a little nervous and one time I lost a stirrup and she stopped, like she is like a seeing eye horse. She yeah. takes care of me. <laughs> You know, they're just so special. And that's how yeah. you feel about this mayor that you won the yeah, Grand Prix. And, you know, what's been interesting, at least for me, when I was younger, when I was in my teens as a young rider and whatnot, I couldn't ride mares. Like, I just, we didn't get along. It didn't work. I remember at one point I had like four stallions and like wow. two geldings. I had no mares. And now I basically almost only have mares. I don't know what has changed, but now I... Mares and I get along. <laughs> but I agree that the mares are just, you know, I think they have an added awareness about them that is obviously a benefit, but also in some cases it's the opposite because some cases sometimes it's better if they're a bit duller, but mares aren't. So when it works, it really works. And, you know, I saw during the press conference, you were talking about how hot she is, that she needs to be ridden constantly. And for our listeners, hot means a lot of energy. You know, yeah. she if she has time off, that works against her. You really need to keep her working. So do you attribute that to winning? Like she just loves to go as fast as she can and she just never tires out? I truly don't know what powers her. I really would love to find out, but she just, there's nothing that she's afraid of. You know, there's, there's nothing that phases her. There's nothing that she believes she can't do. Like she is just like, you know, some mares are very aware, but they're kind of a little flighty. She's just full confidence at all times. Well, now that we've established what an incredible equestrian you are, and this show is one of the greatest and the toughest to win of any show in the world. I mean, it's really when you win the Hampton Classic Grand Prix, yeah. you are revered for life. But why I wanted to do this interview with you and make you the focal point of Rappaport to the Rescue, I have been so 
intrigued and impressed by how much you love your animals. These animals are your family and what you have done personally for rescue, for adoption or rescue, how many rescue animals you have, your ability and the importance to you to speak out for spay and neutering. Talk to me about that, Carl, because you're not just a competitor. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I grew up with animals. I know a lot of people did, but you know, I had I had horses, dogs, chickens, we had cats, we had and I think there's a difference between having an animal and actually seeing that animal not for what you do for them, but what for they do for you. I think it's a different connection. You know, you see value that they are doing to you as opposed to they're just a convenience. You you know. And, you know, I got into rescue, you know, a couple of years back and I started to think, you know, there's so many dogs, more focus on dogs, there's so many dogs being produced, but there's only so much density, like for, you know, a population of a million people, there's only so many households that can have a dog or right. two dogs. Or, and we're producing more than that density. So I love when people rescue dogs, they absolutely have to. But for me, I, the less equally impactful, but less romantic is spaying and neutering. Because you're getting in the way of producing too many dogs. Right. And then, you know, if you don't produce as many dogs, then you'll have fewer in the shelters and you'll have fewer. And I just think it's way less romantic. That's why so many people, they focus on the neediest dogs as opposed to the future ones. And, but for me, it's all, about, it's all about the future ones. And also the life you've led, you come from a very privileged life. Look, you can't be in that sport and not have privilege. <laughs> Let's be honest. And a lot of riders... And I know I've seen it, you know, it's a sport, it's a business, but for you, these animals are your family and you have learned at a very young age and you've obviously, and thank goodness, carried it throughout your adult life to really take care of them. I mean, it's almost passe to say they're my family because, you know, everyone would say their, their dog is their family, but you know, I was raised to love the animal. So it's just normal for me, you know, they're actually like my family members. So for me, that's normal. I understand, you know, I understand for other people, it's different, but it's just normal for me. Yeah. How many rescue animals do you have right now living in your farm, on, in your home in California? So we have a couple horses at the ranch. Then we have two mini horses, one dwarf horse, one dwarf donkey. And then I have Blueberry who's sitting behind me. And I wish I could have more dogs. I really do. It's just hard on the road when I spend so many months on the road to have that many dogs. But it's as much as I can. And Tank, you have an English bulldog? Is his name I have Tank? an English bulldog. I have an English bulldog. And he's great. He's 10 as an English bulldog. And that's old. So yeah. he doesn't travel anymore, but I have a lady in San Diego that takes great care of him. He loves going to the beach, but he's not very, um, he doesn't have a lot of endurance. So they take a, like a, literally like a, what is it, a red flyer wagon. And so when right. he gets tired, they just put him in the wagon and he just sits in the wagon <laughs> and has a great time. And Blueberry, I wish our listeners could see this. I've seen so many pictures of him. He's just so beautiful and he goes everywhere with you, doesn't he? Yeah, she goes everywhere. She, oh, like, she, 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 excuse me. Yeah, yeah. no worries. No, <laughs> she flies when we travel. She flies with me and you know, we go everywhere. And she obviously gets along great with the horses. Oh, yes. I mean, she grew up uh, when I you know, first got her. I think she spent one day at home and then we went straight to a horse show. Oh, my God. So she's really used to being around yeah. the horses. And I think she probably gives you good luck, good energy, right? Yeah. I mean, when you feel more at peace, you always do better when you show. And I think, at least for me, definitely, you know, having Blueberry around helps with that immensely. Well, you came to our attention and I learned all about you when you were married to the very talented Kaylee Cuoco, obviously from the Big Bang Theory and the flight attendant. And what was so great about the two of you, the reason I noticed everything about you and her is what you have done. The two of you together starting yep, yep. for rescue. And obviously, I know you guys are on great terms yep. now. Did she inspire you to get more into rescue or was it the other way around? Yeah, because she was very into rescue. And so, you know, I go along with it. You know, I love the animals. So I was fully supportive of all of that. And then, you know, like I said earlier, then I started to look at the problem. And for me, the solution was always spay and neuter. Because there's a lot of people that are, are working in rescue. And so that's got a lot of attention and a lot of money is going to that. So for me, it was about spay and neuter. And I think both are congruent. They both go together. You, you know, it's not one or the other. They both need to work.
Right. But it's really important to have someone of your stature, especially now that you're gaining so much notoriety in your own right as an incredible equestrian. I mean, you're winning all these shows. You really can have a great voice now, you know, to really educate people. There's so many people looking up to you for what you're doing in this sport. So this gives you a great platform, doesn't it? I think we all want to have an impact in our lives. And if this is the way I can have an impact, I couldn't be happier about that. That's so wonderful. And as far as the show jumping, what do you do next? Like, what's your dream to achieve now? You want to go to the Olympics, I assume. Uh, you know, it sounds weird, but I don't like setting goals. Oh, wow. That's unusual for an athlete. Because this will make sense in a second. Because for <laughs> me, I find when you're competing and you're competing with a horse, so horse sports, when you set a goal for yourself, oftentimes you focus on that goal, which is the point of setting the goal, and you focus a bit less on the horse. You know, you're focused on that goal. And for me, it's always about progress with the horse, getting better and better and better. And if by doing that, I go to the Olympics, then great. But it's about doing better. I don't want to just, you know, no holds barred, do anything I can to get to the Olympics. I'd rather not go to the Olympics than have to look back on those decisions, you know, with regret. So if it happens, it's because we worked hard and it's right for the horse. Of course, I want to go to the Olympics. I mean, imagine going to the Olympics in Paris. I mean, come on. That's just <laughs> pretty but, nice, and, Carl. Uh, and you know, blueberry, I, I, would Blueberry go with you? Oh, if I go to the Olympics, Blueberry's coming. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, yeah 100%. Yeah. Like last week, there was no force involved. Kalinka comes back this week, and I could show her again this week. She, you, you know, but I'm not going to because that's the wrong decision. But it wasn't luck. I didn't have to throw everything at it. It's what I can maintain. How do you get to be so normal? You're so balanced and normal. How does that happen? <laughs> uh, animals. Wow. And it's interesting that you went the show jumping route instead of the crazy cowboy, you know, rodeo route, <laughs> which a lot of boys do when they're young. Yeah, my mom owned show jumpers at that time when I was growing up. And so she had that, you know, connection with the trainer that she had trained with and that she owned horses for. So it was just kind of, if I wanted to ride horses, that's what I was going to do. They must be so proud of you, your parents. They're proud. My mom is also a huge, she loves it for the sport as well. She loves the horse themselves, like on, on all sides. So the success is obviously great, but she does have a lot of pride of, you know, that's my horse. She loves it. Well, I'll tell you, you're an incredible athlete. But what I love about you is what you do off the field and how much you care about animals in need. And I'm going to be bugging you to work with me on a lot of things that I have coming I'm up. Ready. Carl. Thank you, because I think you'd be a great ambassador. I think that there's so many young people looking up to you that you could really influence and get involved in helping with animal rescue and helping for them to understand the need to take care of these animals. Absolutely. And one thing for me, as someone that works with animals every day, you know, there's a big faction of I would say animal lovers, but they believe that to treat an animal well is to leave it alone. People saying that what we do with horses is wrong. We're abusing them. It's not abuse to work with animals. And you can love animals and work with them. And I want people to understand that that connection is important. You know, and I think that connection helps people be better people. I know it's made me a better person. So I know that when you have a real connection with an animal, whether it's a dog or a horse, you're a better person. That's a great note to end on. Carl Cook from California. I said in the beginning, I love the alliteration. Thank you so much. We should mention he's in Michigan right now, right on the heels of winning the Hampton Classic. Yep. He's off in Michigan, getting ready to continue to jump and show. And yep. you, never show stop. Tomorrow. you never yep. stop. You never take nope. a break. But you took time out to do this show. Thank you so much. Thank you for your amazing work for animals in the ring, off the ring, and I'm going to be bugging you. I'm going to keep in touch with I'm you. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, Let's Carl. Thank you, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much and continued success. We really enjoyed today. It was fascinating. And stay safe. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. And thank you for joining us on Rappaport to the Rescue. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.